Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show here on KOXC. I'm Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions Head Football Coach, Athletic Director, Sammy Burnett. I look like a burglar in this outfit. <laughs> I just noticed that. Anyway, back to, back to the important stuff. It's Wednesday. We are two days away from the Lions clinching an outright district championship in Andrews. Or how are you feeling about things, Coach? Man, I'm feeling great. Um, had some good days of practice. Our kids are serious about what they're trying to do, and, and they have all the confidence in the world in themselves and their abilities. And uh, when you have confidence and you're putting forth the work, uh, it gives you an opportunity. So I know we're facing a good Andrews team. Uh, I, they did drop a game against uh, Estacada, but, uh, you know, sometimes it happens that way. But they're a really good football team. They're going to play for four quarters. They're going to play physical. They're going to play fast. They're going to bring something offensively that we haven't seen, so we're going to have, we know that we're going to have to adjust uh, during the course of the game. Uh, but for us, the goal is to control the ball offensively, uh, score every time we have an opportunity, uh, and then defensively figure out what they're doing, adjust to it, play fast, and then, of course, win the special teams game. So uh, uh, I feel our kids are focused and prepared to do that. They have a strong desire, so, uh, you know, Basically, put the hay in the barn today. Tomorrow, we'll go through our special teams game, and and we'll kick the field, which is where we go through every scenario, which could be important. Uh, you know, this week there's a chance of rain. There's 20 to 30 mile an hour winds uh, that could affect things. You know, I, I sat in a playoff game about 10 years ago, uh, and it was raining and windy, and uh, we lost the toss, and the other team deferred, and I took the ball. Well, it was the wind was blowing so bad that. We weren't able to punt, and uh, it really got us behind. It, it, hindsight's twenty twenty. At that in that situation, I I should have gave them the football, and uh, let them deal with the wind and the rain. But uh, could be some kind of scenario like that where the wind's so bad that it messes up your your kicking game, uh, your field position on special teams. Uh, so we're stressing the importance of that. Uh, it could affect your passing game. Uh, so we're going to be, which is uh, not killer for us because. Uh, we feel like we're going to be able to run the football. Uh, for them, if the wind's bad and they're not able to throw the ball, it puts them in an uh, awkward situation because we're going to stop the run. You know, So uh, it could all be good, but you got to put your kids in all those scenarios and make sure that they're ready to understand that. Uh, so, And you got to play with the elements. That's West Texas football. So uh, we'll see what it's like when it comes time for kickoff, and we'll go from there, but we're going to make sure we're prepared for for all elements. Right. So I guess on that note, do you have like a game plan A, like a normal game plan, and this is game plan B if the weather's a mess? Uh, you know, no, we uh, we we focus on that kind of stuff. But, no, we're still going to run the football. Uh, we still got our quick game pass and stuff. If the wind's so bad that you can't force the ball down the field, we still got our quick game stuff that we feel confident in, our screen game we feel confident in. Uh, so if they want to pack the box and, and uh, play press man because of the wind and try to stop the run. We still feel like we're good enough to throw the football, and we can throw it in the wind. we got a quarterback with a strong arm and is smart, and, and we still feel like we can do that. Uh, I think that put them at a disadvantage because I think our receivers are better than their cover guys, especially if they want to play press man or zero coverage on us. So I think uh, that's a benefit to us. On the other side of it, if we're pressing them and we're stacking the box because of the weather, uh, I think that's an advantage for us, too. I think that we have some skilled guys that can cover their guys, and they aren't as efficient at passing the football as we are. I think they're more of a run-heavy team as well. So we sort of match up in that aspect in philosophies. They're going to try to get us on formations and motions and things like that that we hadn't seen. Uh, and then the other element that they bring to the table is they run a bunch of gates, uh, two-point plays after they score touchdowns. And... Uh, I've watched about every film they have, and I was watching another one today, and there's another one. You know, I don't know where they get the time to work all those gates, but they're going to have gates, and they're going to have some that we haven't seen, and we're prepared in about eight of them, and they'll come out in something that we hadn't seen. So I just told Coach Jones the best way to defend those gates is don't let them score, so that's going to be a goal of ours. Okay. Kind of on that note, I guess the biggest concerns you have about their offense and their defense matching up against you all. Uh, biggest concerns about their offense, you know, is just – the, the fact that they're going to come out in something. You know, they had an extra week because they were had a bye last week. They're going to come out in something that we haven't seen. And our ability to adjust and to play fast and, and not get into a panic mode, just to relax and let our, our coaches sift out what they're doing. And we'll make sure that we have a plan together every series or whatever. 
uh, you know, and if they make some plays off of it, just tackle them and go play the next play and, uh, you know, keep them out of the end zone, do that, that mentality that our kids have had all year. It doesn't matter where the ball is or what the down is or what happened to play before, we're going to play the next play. Uh, you know, be sure tacklers. At 12's in the backfield, playing quarterback, he's a lot more of a runner uh, than number five is. Five's more of a passer. Uh, but if 12's in the backfield, we got to take the run away from him. And then uh, on the offensive side, you know, it's just – do what we do. Be more physical. Control the line of scrimmage. Do what we've done the last three weeks. You know, just control the, the ground game. Uh, don't turn the ball over. Uh, stay in front of the chains and uh, uh, don't get penalties. You know, I'm concerned. I've heard rumors from all over the place. You know, rumors are rumors, but they say you got to be careful in West Texas with officiating. And I sure hope that doesn't come into play. But uh, we got to make sure that we're good and crisp at what we do in our techniques so we don't give them an opportunity to throw a flag on us. So uh, that's on us, and we'll take. Uh, credit or blame for that, so uh, really focusing on that aspect. Any concern at all about the long road trip out there? Uh, no, not really. Uh, you know, it's a half day for the school, so they're letting out, and we're having a pep rally, so we'll get our kids out, we'll feed them, get them on the bus. Uh, it's a, about three hours into it. We try to keep them on the same eating regiment that they're in during school, so uh, they won't have lunch with the school, so we'll provide them lunch. And then about 3, 3.30, we'll feed them again and stop and get out and stretch a little bit. I took about 20 minutes extra just to make sure that we had some time to let them get off the bus and walk around and get their food. And then we'll get back on the bus and make about another hour trek to, to uh, Andrews. And we're probably going to be there a little bit earlier as well just so they can get off the bus, walk the field, uh, get acclimated, and just move around a little bit, get that blood flowing. But our kids, uh, they won't let that bus trip bother them. They'll be focused and they'll be ready to go. Okay. Um, of course, as we mentioned, win the game Friday night, outright district championship, not to put the cart before the horse, mm -hmm. but have you got any kind of playoff scenarios? Well, yes, you know, I don't think that, you know, a uh, cart before the horse, you got to be prepared and you got to plan for your first playoff round game. Uh, we've done a lot of work uh, trying to secure facilities. Uh, looks like in the first round we're going to play San Elizario or we'll play a uh, El Paso ISD school, which would be probably Irving or Bowie, uh, so I've contacted both of those athletic directors. They both agreed to play at Ratliff Stadium on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That would be November the 10th, and uh, we're doing that for a couple of reasons. For us, uh, it allows us transportation. It's difficult now to get transportation to go to games, and it looked like we weren't going to have an opportunity uh, to get vehicles or, or buses on uh, Friday, and also the chance of uh, – a 6A or a 5A team using Rattler Stadium as a host stadium because they get the higher seed gets to play at home. Uh, 4A doesn't allow that. So uh, for us to play on Thursday, if I can get that confirmed with the athletic director at, uh, at Odessa, which we've been in contact with, I just got to have confirmation and get those contracts. If that happens to there tomorrow, whoever we play in the first round will come from the El Paso area, and we'll play that on Thursday at 7 uh, at Rattler Stadium. Okay. Um I guess while we're on that topic, as far as the rest of the region, have you make, been keeping an eye on it? Who kind of stands out to you? Yeah, there's a lot going on in region th uh, in District 3, uh, which is who we would match up if we were successful in by district. We'd match up with either Canyon, what I feel is going to be Canyon or Dumas. I think uh, Randall's going to win that district. Uh, that'll put them in basically the southern bracket of our bracket, if that makes sense. There's There'll be eight games or, or eight teams. Uh, sorry, there's... How many teams? So there's going to be eight, 16 teams yes. in the playoffs, four games in the top part of the bracket, four games in the bottom. So in the top part of our bracket would probably be us, Canyon, Dumas, uh, uh, El Paso, Riverside, probably Big Spring, uh, and a couple of others, maybe a, a Wichita Falls, I'm not sure, Springtown, something like that. But the way it match up, it looks like <clears throat> we'd play a week one game against uh, El Paso School. If we were victorious in that, we would wind up playing probably Dumas or Canyon, uh, the way it looks to me. And then if we were successful in that game in the third round, we'd either play the other one, Dumas or Canyon, is what it looks like it's going to pan out to me. And then, uh, of course, in the, if you got to the regional finals, you'd wind up playing, I would think it would be a Decatur, possibly. Uh, could be Andrews, you know, who, who knows. But... Uh, that's sort of how I think that bracket's going to shape out. I try not to uh, get the cart for the horse, as you said, but uh, you got to make plans. you got to have facilities and, and stadiums in place. So I've contacted Dumas uh, about playing it in Lubbock. 
Uh, if we match up with them in the second round, I've also contacted um, Canyon and talked to them about playing at Sweetwater if, uh, if, if that would be the case. And, of course, Dumas agreed to play in, in Lubbock. And uh, it's fine with that. I haven't heard anything back from Canyon yet. I know there's a lot of people's plate. We only have one game left Friday. Those are, everybody else has two. Right. So they're really focusing on district and understand that. And, uh, but if you don't make plans, you're going to be fighting to try to find the facility. And I don't want to put our kids in that situation if I can keep from it. And, uh, you, of course, you don't want to get the card for the horse. we got to play Friday night. we got to be successful. we got to go to the first round be successful. you got to get to the second round be successful. So we're going to take it one game at a time. But I think uh, proper planning uh, – saves you from a lot of headache and a lot of concerns and worries that we don't want to put our kids through nor our coaches through nor our community through so i'm trying to get all those things ironed out if we're blessed to be able to continue to play all right and for those that are going to the game tickets are available yes please again if you're going to the football game in andrews please purchase your tickets at the athletic office with uh, lisa uh, you can get them today and then they, again tomorrow from 8 to 12 1 to 4 and then you get them on friday from 8 to 12 and the reason we want you to do that is because of we get 100% of the proceeds. If you travel to Andrews and you buy a ticket or get an online ticket or however they sell those at the gate, uh, they get all the proceeds. But if we go ahead and purchase a ticket here before we leave town, all that, all that money goes back into our athletic budgets, and we get 100% of that. So I encourage you to do that and keep our money at home. All right. So what else is going on this week, Coach? Uh, well, I want to congratulate our cross-country teams. Uh, they went to Lubbock on Monday and participated, and our girls uh, did did well, uh, ran well as a group. I think Sydney Wyndham was one place out of advancing mm-hmm. the state. So I know that's sort of heartbreaking. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's just like in football. You go to the semifinals and lose. It, it hurts more than if you got beaten by district or something for whatever reason because you think you're a failure when, honestly, you're not to – Many people would like to be in that situation and be in that spot for Sydney. I know it's disheartening for her. I know she wanted to go to state, and she was one place out of that. But you know what? Sometimes that fuels the fire uh, in the off season. and she's a young lady that has a bright future ahead of her, and so does the girl, rest of the girls' cross-country team. So I commend them for what they did. The boys, I thought, uh, did extremely well for the first time being in eight years. Uh, uh, Caleb Nelson, I think, finished like 36 overall. He also finished second, and everybody in our district went in the district meet. He finished fifth, so he advanced three places. Uh, Luke Gray, same thing. I think he finished ninth uh, and, uh, and uh, was up like seven spots in where he placed in district. So that's also improvement and great leadership from those two seniors. And for those boys to get to go to, to Lubbock and run in that uh, regional cross-country meet is huge. There's a lot of kids. If you've ever been to a regional cross-country meet, there is a lot of participants and a lot of kids out there running hundreds so for our kids to perform at the level that they did uh for the boys going for the first time and and you know being on that stage and you know nerves come into play with that and then the girls to continue to grow and to continue to develop with them and and go to the regionals again i think is important and it's huge and i'm really proud of uh, coach parker and 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 coach paris and coach mosqueda for what they did for our kids and 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 i commend the kids for their work ethic those kids uh, work as hard as anybody, and they put in long hours, and it starts very early in the morning. So uh, I commend them for a very successful season. Okay. Uh, what else is happening? Well, uh, well, you know, girls basketball kicked off last Wednesday, and Coach Wartz and her gals have been in the gym getting after it. But today I walk in this morning about 6 o'clock and get ready for, for our weights and walkthroughs, and there's Will Parker in the gym with the basketball team. And uh, they kicked off today, so they're in full force starting today. Uh, so we got thump thump going on in the gym, uh, and it's just starting to, you know, trickle into that next phase of getting ready for some holiday time, getting ready for some basketball tournaments and basketball games, and hopefully uh, continue to see a lot of football games. So uh, it's an exciting time of year. The weather's changing, you know. But it just, you know, puts a little energy in the air with some playoff football, and then the starts of our, of our basketball seasons is always a special time. So uh, it's neat. We're getting into that transition. Uh, so hopefully we can continue that football season for a long time and as we're watching a little basketball at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like sub varsity tomorrow starting a little earlier. That's right. Uh, Andrews asked that uh, we start a little bit earlier uh, because of their travel. So we're going to kick off our freshman game at 4 o'clock at Gordonwood Stadium, and then our JV will follow that. It's somewhere around 530-ish. Uh, I really can't dictate that based on you know the time of that first game. And then our combined team will be at Lano and playing uh, at 5 o'clock. And, you know, for that combined team, they have an opportunity to go 7-3. Uh, and three. 
uh, or six and four. Either way, and usually like when we travel to Atlanta with the combined team, they're playing a full JV, and uh, it's a pretty uh, difficult situation. But our kids get out there and fight hard, so we're going to try to get them another win there and finish the season seven and three or six and four, which is a big success uh, for them. Our freshmen have an opportunity to finish eight and two, and our uh, JV has an opportunity to finish nine and one. So I'm really pleased with with what they're doing, and and hopefully we can finish their season strong. Of course, we'll have an opportunity to move up some of those JV kids to help us on the varsity, whether that be in special teams or spot play in, in certain situations. So uh, I'm excited to get them up there and get them to practice with us every day. And then, of course, some of them will, will start trickling into basketball, and then the remainder will start working and start our offseason program with them. All right. Well, anything else you want to mention today? Coach? I don't know. Didn't we hit everything? I think, remember, kickoff in Andrews is going to be at 7 o'clock. There's a chance of high winds. 20 to 30 miles an hour, 10, 30% chance of rain, I think, and it's going to be a little chilly. I think the high is going to be 60, 61 in Andrews, so kickoff time is probably going to be in the 50s. But uh, that's cold for an old man like me, so I'm going to be bundled up. I told our coaches, I don't care uh, what you got. We, we're not blessed to have the same attire because you can't get a tire right now and you can't get anything from anybody. So make sure you're warm and make sure you're dry. And, and I, I recommend that for the fans to bring blankets, whatever you got to do. Don't care about what you look like. Just bring that voice and cheer loud because we're fighting for the first district championship in a long time. Yeah, I won't be wearing shorts on the sideline <laughs> Friday <either>. night. <laughs> I'll be bundled up. All right. Anything else today, Coach? Yeah, let's thank those that make this show possible. Auto Glass Magic, Burner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Everett Jones Investment. Hendrick Medical, Howie Enterprises, Humphrey Peets, Heartland Funeral Home, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter and Johnson Associates, Smith and Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie's Tees. All right, we will be back here Monday to celebrate a district championship. And Amen. And to Amen talk to about the bye week. That's, that's what finally I'm here. <laughs> that's what I'm t- I'll tell you, you want to know what I'm doing on the bye week? What's that? Well, I didn't have any plans. I was trying to figure out something to do, but uh, I have a buddy by the name of Bon Young, mm-hmm. uh, who is an avid Cowboy fan, as I am, and he's a season ticket holder. Well, he's going to the game. His daughter's in the band, and they support the football team in the band, him and his wife, and uh, they're going to the to the uh, football game, and then they're traveling to Denton for the band concert for their mm-hmm. daughter on that Saturday, and then Sunday's a Cowboy game, and and Bon told Brandy, said, hey, you've got the Cowboy game on Sunday. She said, well, you have a good time with that, which freed up a ticket. So I got mm-hmm. invited to go watch the Cowboys play. So I'm going to do that okay, Sunday and enjoy go. myself. Well, you'll definitely see some good defense, I would think. Yeah, I'm, I'm very appreciative of that opportunity. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll, we'll be back Monday here on KOXE, KOXE.com, the KOXE app, and the KOXE Facebook pages. Yeah, and we're going to bring that go ball and sit it right in the middle of the table. Perfect. Have, <laughs> have a great day, Brownlee.